okay so in today's video we will be discussing about design of combined footing uh, its analysis and design you see this is a combined footing which uh, is used to, uh, for two or more columns this is isolated footing isolated footing is uh, supporting only one column this is a wall footing which is uh, supporting a wall <clears throat> in this topic in this video we will be discussing the analysis and design of this uh, combined footing okay the statement says that uh, a combined footing was selected to support a 24 by 16 inch exterior column okay these are the dimensions of exterior column and uh, exterior column is near a property line okay and a 24 by 24 inch interior column so there are two columns on it one is exterior other one is the interior each column carries the service dead and live loads which will be shown in the figure on next slide uh, these are the dead loads on ex uh, dead and live load on exterior column these are the dead and live loads on interior columns okay the footing dimensions were selected such that the centroid of the area in contact with soil coincides with the resultant of the column loads supported by the footing okay so this area was selected based on what so that the centroid of the area is uh, uh, it coincides with the resultant of column loads. So these are the column loads. Its resultant coincides with the centroid of this area. Okay. Check if the selected combined footing preliminary thickness of 36 inch is sufficient to resist two-way punching shear around the interior and exterior column supporting by the footing. Okay. So first of all, you have to check that the punching shear whether both the columns satisfied the criteria for two-way punching shear or not if the initial thickness is three feet that is 36 inches so this is the preliminary design given to you the thickness of the footing the dimensions the width and the length of the footing and uh, all the distances okay are given to you and you have to check whether it is sufficient or not so going uh, to the solution steps uh, these will be the steps we will be following number one will be preliminary member sizing putting cross-sectional dimensions and factored net pressure then the second thing will be once we get the factored net pressure we will be going for the shear capacity check of interior and exterior columns and then the one way shear uh, i would like to mention here that one way shear is dominant in the wall footings as we discussed it uh, in the wall footing uh, uh, in the prc1 course uh, however we have to check it here as well but it will not go on here only the punching shear will go on and it will be the critical one uh, and the last step will be the flexural reinforcement design for negative moment at mid span and positive moment at interior column you will check it okay so this is the given data concrete strength is 3000 steel strength is 60000 initially we are given 36 inch depth of the footing dead and live loads are given unit weight of soil unit weight of concrete allowable soil pressure is given to you footing length width and depth everything is given to you okay coming to the first step the preliminary member sizing uh, member size is given to us so we don't have to bother here okay you just read it by yourself the second point it says the factored net pressure that will be used in the design of the concrete and reinforcement is equal to this what is this this is the factored net pressure uh, coming from the soil on the footing this is the force uh, coming from both the columns uh, divided by area of the footing so if you remember this figure okay 1.2 into dead load of this column and dead load of this column plus 1.6 into live load of this column and live load of this column so remember these figures and now just see okay divided by area of the footing you know the width which is 8 feet and you know the length uh, effective length 25.33 see here 25.33 see okay so from this equation you get the value of net pressure factored net pressure equals to 5.92 ksf okay this is the uh, stress or uh, pressure acting from the soil on the uh, footing the figure on next slide shows the shear and moment diagrams okay so this is the factored load from column exterior column this is factored load from interior column and this is the 5.92 kips per fit is the 
pressure from uh, soil on the footing so a very simple diagram you can draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram so from here you can see that the negative bending moment at the center and positive bending moment at the center of this column this this is the shear force and bending moment diagram of your footing the combined footing now coming to the two way punching shear capacity check two way shear is critical on a rectangular section located at d by 2 we know this thing okay uh, in the design of a isolated column footing if you remember so uh, the the critical parameter will lies at d by 2 from the face of the column and you have to check it for that okay so in this case you have to see uh, three different uh, cases for example uh, critical perimeter for interior column for exterior column and for corner column this is our case we have to uh, talk about these two cases so b1 this direction will be equal to what it will equal to the uh, dimension of the column in this direction plus d by 2 at this phase and d by 2 at this phase so b1 equals c1 plus d same is the case will be p2 uh, it will be equal to c2 plus half of d and half of d okay so uh, when uh, we conclude it uh, for interior column you see b1 is equal to c1 plus d and b2 is equal to c2 plus d so uh, we have discussed this thing okay <coughs> You read this what ACI says about these things. These are the three uh, cases we are considering talking about these two. This is the neutral axis or centroid of the column, the W and Z uh, axis are the uh, centroid. Okay. And what is CAB and CCD? This is the, the location of the centroidal or the neutral axis of the column, the centroid of the column in both the cases okay so coming to interior column the factored shear force vu at the critical section is computed as the reaction at the centroid of the critical section minus the force due to soil pressure acting within the critical section okay so this is the reaction at the column centroid which is 720 minus this is the uh, factored allowable pressure which we have computed into uh, 56.5 divided by 12 you are converting it into uh, inches from feet uh, sorry from inches to feet okay and what is this 56.5 uh, uh, if you can uh, if you look over here this is equal to b1 and b2 in this case because uh, uh, this is a, a square column and both the dimensions are uh, equal therefore b1 is equal to b2 so you can see that 56.5 is uh, chosen over here uh, if let's suppose and uh, the factored unbalanced moment used for shear transfer m unbalanced is computed as the sum of the joint moments to the left and right okay so this is the moment you uh, use to transfer the shear and uh, equal to the joint moments to the left and uh, right okay moment of the vertical reaction with respect to the centroid of the critical section is also taken into account uh, in this case unbalanced moment is equal to zero for interior column uh, we know b1 we know b2 for interior columns the location of the centroidal axis zz is <coughs> uh, let me show you once again what is uh, section zz uh, this is section zz see in this case uh, in the case of interior column so uh, CAB see this is CAB which is the distance from uh, side AB to the uh, section ZZ uh, XZZ okay so CAB is equal to half of B1 <coughs> see this is B1 and half of B1 is CAB which will be equal to 28.25 inches in this case okay now the polar moment of the shear parameter is i hope you people are familiar with the polar moment of inertia you have uh, uh, learned these things in the mechanics of solids and uh, i hope you you are familiar with the concepts and everything uh, so the uh, jc in this case will be equal to this is the formula you know all the terms 
you just put the values and you will get the answer now gamma f is equal to this thing you know b1 b2 just put the values and you will get the value for gamma f and from gamma f you will get gamma v so this is your gamma v you know the uh, re uh, reference sections the length of the critical perimeter for the exterior column uh, sorry this is not exterior this is interior okay will be equal to four times the 56.5 so this is 226 inch so the two way uh, shear stress that can then be calculated as this is a formula from ACI this section uh, you just put the values and you will get the shear stress that is applied okay this is 80.2 now uh, to, uh, uh, to calculate the strength uh, you have these three formulas number one number two and number three uh, you just put the values the minimum one will be the shear strength and uh, you got 219 as a minimum one just apply factor and you will get the 5vc so your 5vc is greater than vu since 5vc is greater than vu at the critical section the slab has adequate two-way shear strength at this joint okay now coming to the exterior column in exterior column you know pu which is 480 right in case of interior it was i think uh, 700 Putting the same formula if you remember in the interior column it was 56.5 square right because it, the b1 and b2 was same let me show you see here it is 56.5 square but now uh, as you can see that uh, there are only three sides okay so uh, you can you have to consider only three sides therefore 32.25 into 56.5 divided by 144 your VU is 405.1 kips. You are, uh, since it is exterior column, so there will be some unbalanced moment. So what is unbalanced moment? Uh, 480 into 15.65. What is 16.65? See from figure you can see that it is the difference distance between uh, the line of application of uh, column load to the centroidal axis of shear perimeter. Okay. So this distance is 15.65 inches minus this is the allowable pressure coming from the footing uh, which was 5.92 multiply by 32.25 into 56.5 the area divided by 144 multiply by 7.53 what is 7.53 see this is the 7.53 this is the uh, line of application of uh, this uh, 5.92 from the bottom and this is its centroid or the point of uh, or line of action and this is the distance between uh, both these points so the m um, unbalanced in this case is 6950 inch cape which was zero in the case of interior column in this case b1 will be equal to c1 plus half of d because there is uh, uh, nothing on the other side uh, see this is the column uh, you have uh, on one side and nothing on the other side so d1 by 2 is your half distance and uh, uh, you have to add it with the c1 and you get this and b2 will be the same since in the other direction the perpendicular to this one uh, the uh, the footing is on the both sides so it will be the same so this is b1 this is b2 okay this is b1 this is b2 now uh, coming to the allocation of centroidal axis set z uh, c a b is equal to moment of areas of the sides about a b divided by area of these sides so you know 32.5 into 32.25 into half of 32.25 okay divided by 2 into 32.25 into 32.5 plus 56.5 into 32.5 so putting the values in this equation you will get cab is equal to 8.6 inches and the polar moment of shear perimeter just like previous uh, formula put the values and you will get the result okay now gamma f gamma f you know b1 b2 just put the values you will get gamma v the length of the critical perimeter for the exterior column b naught is equal to 2 times 32.25 plus 56.5 this comes out to be 121 inch 
the two way shear stress vu can then be calculated as this is a formula and you know all the values for it just put the values and you will get vu as 192 psi okay remember that for interior column it was around some 80 okay now uh, you have to check the strength of the concrete in shear so these are again three formulas put the values the minimum one turns out to be 219 just factor it and it is 164 so this time it is less than vu since 5vc is less than vu at the critical section the slab does not have adequate two-way shear strength at this joint okay so it was okay in interior column and not okay in the exterior column increasing the footing thickness to 40 inch with effective depth 36.5 inch so now we are trying another footing depth okay in by changing the depth we are changing the parameters vu will be then equal to 394.8 okay and why uh, parameters are changed because if you go back and uh, check that uh, your b1 and b2 both depends on your d okay so if your d is changed your, your b1 and b2 are changed and everything will be changed now okay so now uh, you have calculated b1 and b2 you have put it them in the equation and uh, you got the values similarly your unbalanced moment will be changed and uh, you are getting new values see this is your b1 34.25 and this is your b2 60.5 okay for the exterior column lo location of the centroidal axis zz is this one the polar moment of the shear perimeter is this one and gamma f will be 0 0.33 uh, 0 0.666 putting this in gamma v we will get gamma v and finally we will get the uh, okay uh, here they are uh, calculating uh, the length of the critical perimeter for the exterior column b naught is equal to two times uh, the shorter side and uh, one times the longer side which is equal to 129 inches the two-way shear stress can then be calculated as this is the formula put the values you will get 157 so previously it was 194 if you see uh, here 192 okay so with 36 inch depth it was 192 and with 40 inch depth it is 157 and similarly uh, by changing the depth the result of uh, uh, your 5vc is 164 so 164 is now greater than 157 so your value is okay the slab has adequate two-way shear strength at this joint use a combined footing 25 feet 4 inch by 8 feet in plan 3 feet 4 inch thick with effective depth of 36.5 inches and this was your uh, uh, cross-sectional design from two-way shear now one-way shear capacity check the critical section for one-way shear is located at distance d from the face of the column the one-way shear capacity of the foundation can be calculated using these formulas since this example focus on the calculation of two-way shear capacity for combined foundation if you want to check the one-way shear then uh, i will refer you to the design of wall footing or strip footing uh, which we have done in prc1 okay so you can check there now coming to the flexural reinforcement design the negative moment at the mid span uh, do you remember the bending moment diagram the critical section for moment is shown in the moment diagram in figure 2 the design moment is mu is equal to 2100 kip feet we have the value of d which is 36.5 now to determine the area of steel assumptions have to made whether the section is tension or compression controlled and regarding the distance between the resultant compression and tension forces along the footing section jd in this example tension control section will be assumed so the reduction factor phi is equal to 0.9 and jd will be then e taken equal to 0.95 of d the assumption will be verified once the area of steel is finalized okay so assume jd is equal to 0.95 on the basis of uh, tension controlled section you have jd is equal to 34.68 inches putting the values you will get area of steel 
recalculate a you will get 3.3 .3 inches c is equal to a divided by beta 1 which is equal to 3.88 inches epsilon t is equal to 0.0252 so steel is yielding the assumption that section is tension controlled is valid area of steel can be recalculated which comes out to be 13.4 square inches depending of the method of analysis the minimum area of reinforcement shall be calculated using beam provisions or one-way slab provisions in this case both beam and slab provisions will be illustrated for example for beam provisions these are the formulas as per ac aci and uh, by putting the values you will get this value 11.7 square inches which is less than this uh, design area of steel so okay you are on safe side so use 17 number 8 top bars with area of steel is equal to 13.43 square inches at mid span and if you are using slab provision then this is the as minimum formula and uh, for this uh, you are again okay so use 17 number 8 top bars with area of steel 13.43 square inches at mid span okay this is the negative reinforcement at the mid span now for positive moment at interior column for beam provisions repeat the same process at section 4.1 this is the section 4.1 what we have done okay it gives us area of steel of 3.3 .3 square inches but it is less than as minimum of both beam and slab provisions so in this case if you are using the beam provision your area of steel will be 11.9 and number of bars will be 15 number 8 however if you are using slab provisions your area of steel will be 7.11 and your bar numbers will be 9 number 8 bars so see there is a big difference of 6 bars 6 number 8 bars okay note please that code provisions permit the use of reinforcement of one third more than is required by analysis in some cases so if in your analysis requires three bars you can provide one third more than your analysis so you can provide four bars okay so better you put 15 number eight bars uh, this is a simple comparison i am presenting for you people a uh, comparison of two-way punching shear check results for putting with 36 inch thickness okay this is uh, the hand calculation that i just presented you okay this is the uh, figure or value from the reference for example this is the reference from where i took it and this is a finite element method results so for exterior column the b1 calculated was same b2 calculated was same for both interior and exterior and cab was somewhat uh, same similarly the polar moment for shear critical parameter it was uh, same for exterior the gamma v same vu was same for uh, interior column the reference was not providing some of the values okay coming to the uh, bending moment values mu punching vu and phi vc so <clears throat> uh, which we termed as unbalanced moment if you remember uh, the exterior the reference and hand was same however finite element method gives a different value a much larger value than the hand one similarly vu finite element was always giving higher values however it was somewhat similar for the interior column and uh, same is the uh, comparison of logical reinforcement in longitudinal direction the mu was same almost same for uh, all the three methods as required was uh, almost same and the uh, yes, minimum was also same <clears throat> so it says that you using beam provisions to find as minimum to be consistent with the reference approach however engineering judgment need to be taken to decide 
if the combined pudding need to be treated as a one-way slab or beam so it is up to engineering judgment that uh, which approach you want to adopt for the design of your combined pudding these are the references and thank you very much for your attention